We are now recording. There you go. Um, hi, everybody. We've got a few. Karen just texted me. She's running a little late, driving home from a basketball game. Um, so let's just get started because I know Nancy has to sign off and um, a few others will, will um, join us. Um, I think all of you were on just now while Laura introduced Mathilde, her uh, intern, and some of you all have interns, which we're just saying is such a great program. Um, the first thing I would like to do is um, just you all hopefully got to read the minutes of our last meeting in April and if I could get a motion to approve as presented. I see Nancy Geary. Do we have a second? I see BJ. All good. Everybody opposed? Great. Yep. All right. Um, we're going to try to plow through this agenda because we actually have a lot to talk about. I'm going to have Laura start with um, the Connecticut um, CT visit, say yes to Connecticut campaign. She's on the committee and done some work for us. I just want us to talk about it for a minute. Um, yeah, well, it's, it's really the state of Connecticut's tourism um, campaign. And I'm going to, let me see, will this work if I do this? Uh, hold on. You just, I, I know, hold on. Share screen. Can I do it like this? I don't know what you're doing because you turned your video off. Oh, I don't know. I'm on an iPad. We've got a good picture of you, though. Yeah. That's yes, very good. fashionable. You should be uh, able to go down to the bottom and share screen. Do you, you have the, the video queued up? Yeah. So if you go share screen, then you'll see the different screens of what's in the background. Uh, well, I wonder if it works on the iPad that way. Huh. All right, so hold on. So I go back to Zoom. Do you want to talk about, oh. I just want to show this campaign. I mean, listen, I wasn't involved in making the campaign, but. Um, wow, is this, I, is this I the did. state of Connecticut one? Yeah. yeah. Do you have a just, feature? Just Google say yes to Connecticut. Yeah, I can't okay. figure it uh, All right, and, and I'm going to co-host too, BJ. Okay, And great. it'll pop up. Oh, wait, share content. Yeah, I don't know. All right, well, BJ's finding it. So so talk a little bit about it, Laura. Do you want to so, see the um, video? Would you like oh, to Oh, you see got it? it? Yeah, just show mm -hmm. the video, because it, it's a, it's great, because it's a lot of Fairfield County. OK, one minute. I'm not going to. I want to just play it back, get this, do that. Here you go. So here we go. Is there music or something? Can you hear it? No. No. Hmm. It's just kind of a voiceover, but I, it's just nice to see, you know, we got the glass house in there. Um, and, you know, the way I've they really- I've seen it um, playing in real life. Here in Connecticut. Here we go. So I think I think the cool thing is it's rolling out with many different ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want no, to thank the Connecticut Valley Community College and to so thank I'll you, Dr. Valley. So, um, Greg, how did you? How did the Glass House become involved in the program? Did they come to you? Did you jump on it? You know, I think Krista reached out. Okay. All right. So. Yeah. Yeah, because I've sent like to like. Glass House and, you know, I mean, Glass House is, was already very wired into them, but kind of all of our assets, I sent sort of a how-to on how to get your content either to Western Connecticut or, um, or the CT visit site and to create your own site. And they're, they're just desperate for content and photos. Um, so I'm hoping people follow up. Maybe I'll uh, resend it. Um, but obviously that's, you know, our, uh, a great thing to have that in there. And Ridgefield was featured and Stanford. So uh, I think Fairfield County had a great representation and, and that's a state and, and they're, you know, they're looking at tri-state area. And, you know, last summer they just talked about kind of staycation stuff, but the media buy is spread out um, throughout New York and Massachusetts to try to get more uh, day, day travelers. And uh, they just, uh, the, uh, Randy Fivish, who was the Connecticut Tourism uh, Director, just retired, and so they've got an interim. So it'll be interesting to see uh, when a new person comes in. Um, but I, I think it's great. The the other thing that coming out of the state 
is in October of 2019, the, the legislative legislature passed a statute that municipalities could establish cultural districts. And that happened in October of 2019. And obviously uh, 2020 was a different year, but uh, BJ brought to my attention that uh, Ridgefield has now established themselves as a cultural district. And it's a pretty lengthy process you know, the municipality has to endorse it. You have to have a very diverse um, committee, but I think it could become a subcommittee of TDAC and you create a cultural district commission, you, you do a map, um, but it's a cultural district is a specific area of a city or town identified by the municipality that has a number of cultural facilities, activities and or assets, both profit and nonprofit. It's a walkable compact area that is easy for visitors to recognize. It is a center of culture activities, artistic and economics. It is a place in your city or town where community members congregate and visitors may enjoy those places that make the community look special. Um, and it says, what I like is because each community is unique, each cultural district will look different. So I think um, between Tucker and I, we'll reach out to Ridgefield and found, find out how they did it, what the process was. You know, it's a classic state sort of uh, you know process and then you put, put your presentation together and go before uh, before a state uh, board and then they'll approve you or not approve you and what's nice is because I was like oh is is Waveney walkable to downtown but you can have multiple cultural districts in town uh, obviously Waveney Park with uh, Carriage Barn and the Powerhouse Theater would be ideal so, and then our downtown area with Nature Center and Historical Society and the Glass House Visitor Center would certainly be it and downtown. And then it also ties into sustainable Connecticut, which we are, uh, Tucker, you said we're at a silver level right now. Yeah, we're at the, we were bronze, now we're silver. We've just achieved the silver level. I'm on that committee and we meet again tomorrow, so. So uh, I'll do a little research on this and then we would be certified by the state as a cultural district. And, you know, if, I, you know, I think it's just a nice thing. It's interesting. I went on the CT visit website and New Canaan is listed as a, you know, town with culture and history and arts uh, are right on there. So I, I, I would absolutely believe that we would be able to uh, pull this off and get this designation. And right now, from what I've read, I don't know how many other towns are in process, but Ridgefield is the only town that actually has done the work and, um, and, you know, uh, got the designation. So uh, Tucker can maybe reach out to the first selectman's office there, find out who was in charge, and then I can uh, make a phone call and, and see what was involved. So I'll report back at our next meeting. I bet you it's that guy, Laura, that you and I met with. Didn't we go up to Ridgefield once and have breakfast with that guy? No, he came and he came down to us too. He came down to us once and then we went up there, right? Okay. Yeah, so we'll, we'll find out, but it has to be sanctioned by the municipality. Um, so anyway. Yeah. But think of the summer theater and um, yeah. what, what our theater will become soon. And we just have a lot of stuff right downtown. Yeah. yeah. Way more so. than Ridgefield. Way yeah. more than Ridgefield. <laughs> That's right. Tucker, what do we that need to do to be gold? What's that? Yeah. What do we need to do to be gold? Oh gosh, Robin Bates Mason is the leader of this and she would be able to tell you, but I do know little things like, and I'm gonna talk about it um, later on. I know we had the presentation on EV charging, you know, more EV charging stations, um, things that happen at our transfer station, um, but you get, it also opens up grants by, by being different levels. You, you know, you're, you're in a new category for some grants, which is always nice. So we're meeting tomorrow morning. So I'm glad that I know about this now and I can talk to Robin tomorrow and just find out what it would take to get to gold, right? <laughs> Silver's not good enough. Let's get to gold. Platinum. Platinum, if there's a platinum level. <laughs> Thank <I'm not>. you. <laughs> so um, yeah, I guess Laura, just, yeah, if you can get back to all of your people and just say, get on this site, this is free advertising. I remember a while ago, Laura, when we had that woman who was heading up the CT tourism come down and do a whole presentation for us. And the, the thing that we struggled with then, and I think we still struggle with now, is just getting these businesses to take advantage of it. It's so, it's so frustrating when you put this right. right in front of them. I know Laura's had several Zoom meetings recently about everything from sidewalk sale to these proposed bump outs to, I don't know, it seems like you've had two or three, and the participation is pathetic. And yeah. it's uh, Tucker Jack just emailed. He's having trouble getting in. 
So what does he want me to do? Maybe just give him the link directly. Like, you know, email him the link because he just might. Having trouble. Could you send Zoom link? It's in. There we go. It's in the it's agenda. It's in the agenda. Uh, yeah. I, I know, but there. technological. All right. All right. Well, which means. Let me um, just, hold on. And Laura, Laura you mentioned that, um, you know, from a branding standpoint, the say yes to Connecticut little tricky getting down to the hyper local level and co-branding because right. they're pretty specific right about you know keeping their branding as opposed to us commandeering and saying say yes to new canaan right gotcha um but i'll have a conversation with them and find out uh, number one if they have any particular uh content needs right now uh i know mm -hmm. western connecticut is doing some outdoor and because outdoor, so many of the outdoor boards are now electronic. So yes. it's not like just put the Super one easy. Ad, yeah. yeah, you know, paint the one ad up there. <laughs> um, so, uh, but the good news is they're very wired in with the glass house, which is awesome. Great. Uh, Chris has got a great relationship with them. And another interesting fact about that CT visit website, I typically put sidewalk sale on their, you know, calendar. Yeah. And when I go back and look at the Google Analytics of the Chamber um, site, mm -hmm. one of the leading drivers during the sidewalk sale period is that CT visit calendar, which is incredible. Um, people really find it there. In fact, uh, that's one of Matilde's project next week is, is to get our uh, sidewalk sale up there because we have a little account and we can put stuff in. So. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, so it, it's definitely a, a big driver. Um, we, you know, I, I put it up there and I was surprised to see that we definitely got a lot of traffic from that, so. So yeah, so that goes for anybody else that's having any events if you wanna put them up. Um, I don't know if you're gonna have October for design up there, Nancy, but certainly something worth thinking about. Okay. Unless you're gonna be completely sold out by then. We, we yeah. probably are, but that's okay. That's, At the rate that's you're good. going. Which it's is the first real problem, yeah, we're happy. Yeah, real problem. Fabulous. <laughs> Um, all right, so um, nothing more really on that other than we'll get more information and, and get back to you all and see if anybody wants to join us and working on getting that cultural district designation, that would be good. Um, TDAC goals, you know, we've spent a lot of time, I feel like last year with COVID, I mean, I, I, I was looking back at our minutes from our agendas from all the meetings and gosh, last year at this time, it was all about survival, right? We were just trying to figure out how we were gonna stay alive and. Um, you know, now we're back to figuring how we're gonna how we're gonna come alive again, and I think things are are doing just that. Um, what I was hoping we could talk a little bit about is back to a conversation that we started to have before COVID hit um, about some sort of a fact sheet or something that what we what I'd like to do is sit down with a couple of key real estate agents and say commercial real estate agents. So hopefully, when Jack gets on and say, you know, is there something that you don't have? Is there some tool that you don't have that would be helpful to you to sell New Canaan or to close a deal or to reach out to other businesses? Um, I mean, we can come up with all these beautiful images and that kind of thing, but I, I, what I keep coming back to in the research that I'm doing is the one piece that I think we're missing, and this is, and if Jack were on, he would agree to this, but um, is data. We just don't have any real data. We have a lot of anecdotal information. We certainly all know those of us that are here know it, you know, through and through, but, um, and, and that costs money. I mean, to get, to get these kinds of facts and figures pulled together costs, costs some money. In the meantime, I was talking with Kevin about it too. And, you know, he thinks, oh, we, he thinks Laura and I could just pull together, you know, a, a nice little glossy, uh, is he, oh, no, there he is. Um, How'd that and, happen? It's just like that, right? Um, but as I say, in reading more about it uh, over the last few days, it seems to me that, and, and we saw this, right? When David Genovese came and met with us, right? He showed us the website that he used. And he, that's how he, I think that's his number one tool, honestly, when he, when he goes out to, uh, to recruit businesses. Um, so, and I guess, Alan, I'd, I'd love to ask you too, let's say we come up with this, right? We have something that we speak with the, the real estate agents, we find out what it is that, they're, that they need. Do, would you have advice for us on how we actually, I mean, I think towns must get pitched all day, every day, right? Um, I mean, you know, different businesses from towns get pitched all the time. What, what strategies or what do you think we could do to, to, 
take advantage of something like that to get in front of some of these businesses to see if we could recruit them out here to New Canaan? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, there's the basic PR going out there and, and pitching stories, social media, I think tying into what Live New Canaan is doing is key and putting, you know, facts and figures against their efforts. Um, I think everybody on this call and every, every shopkeeper is an ambassador for New Canaan and, you know, arming people with this, this type of information. But um, I think, you know, the, the commercial real estate brokers will be key here, as you said, to tell us what, it, what is it that people need to make that final decision that we can show people out there that this, this is what we have. I, I do think trying to pitch it like a business story about New Canaan could be really interesting because, you know, we, we show up in the news a lot. You know, I notice I pay a lot of attention to we get into the real estate stories here and there. And there's obviously a little too much on the crime front we keep getting into on, on and right. off. But, um, I think there are a lot of great stories, and obviously the Glass House and the Historical Society. But I, I, you know, since we started, you know, I've been talking about this with you, trying to pitch that kind of, you know, evergreen story beyond just for real estate. Just it's it's such a unique town and, and what it offers. But I do think data is, you know, even if we did a survey sponsored by the town of New Canaan, data is what gets the media really excited because they've got real hard facts to tie into. So. I think if, if there's a fund for that or something. Yeah, I mean, and in, so I guess what I, I would need is is um, some advice from you or if you know somebody that we can speak with. Oh, there you are, Jack. He's finally coming on. Um, but could I ask a question based on the couple of presentations that Live New Canaan um, has done? They talk a lot about metrics for their website, but there's no... I, I maybe I missed it, but there's no correlation between people who visited the site and actually bought a home. Like they haven't made that extra mm -hmm. connection. Mm -hmm. And conversion. I, We're looking yeah. for the conversion. Exactly. So that's the right word. I'm not a, a, a metrics person, but anyway, the conversion rate. And I, I feel like that those are the numbers that are missing. You know, to have a million hits on your website if nobody actually then visits and they just look at your website doesn't do you any good mm -hmm. right but is is this about real estate or is it about uh businesses in it's a business? commercial yeah it's commercial we're, right and what so it's retail is that what we're looking for or we're looking for you know people to fill the office buildings in new canaan both I mean, both. both so oh. so don't we have we have statistics on how many people live what their incomes are what their spends are and all that kind of stuff isn't that really what we're looking at from a real from a retail point of view go ahead yeah, i think J jack jack is on the front lines of this but what you know what if someone a potential business is looking to come here they're looking, yeah, I mean, for the basic demographics, but they're also looking, you know, stuff like a gap analysis. So where are people leaving town to shop? How, you know, how much money are people in New Canaan spending on beauty products or dog food or whatever it is and look for opportunities that are not here. Um, and there, there are plenty of private services that have this, you know, big data, you know, c compilations, but it's, very expensive. Tucker and I spent some time talking to a company called Buxton out of, uh, I think it was Dallas, Texas, and they have incredible um, data and all that, but you've got to subscribe, you've got to subscribe for a year. Um, and we even talked to some local landlords about it and no one seemed interested. You know, the, the, this private market typically is taking care of itself uh, because of our demographics and our good schools and uh, of where we are. Um, and over the last, you know, 20 years, the nature of retail has obviously changed. And that's why we see more uh, experiential uh, businesses as opposed to hard goods. Right. So, um, you know, we're, we're about where we were two years ago or two or three years ago with the, re uh, the residential market. Now here we are with the commercial market and we don't have the advantage of an MLS system for any commercial space. So it's hard to even look at you know, what is our occupancy rate? What's our, you know, all that sort of stuff because it just doesn't exist. It's always, you know, been kind of one-on-one -on -one transactions. But but I'm interested what to what Jack has to say because he he's really out there doing it. 
Can I, can I just ask, do we know if any of the federal funds that are being distributed post COVID can be earmarked for anything like this for? Mm. You know? Yeah, that's a really good point. There are, um, there are some restrictions certainly on some of the different uh, funds that are, that there's the CARES Act money and then of course the FEMA money. Um, but I've got to believe that some of it could be designated for uh, revitalization. Yeah. Um, so I can check with, um, I can check with our CFO tomorrow as he's obviously been doing a lot of work on this front and find out if we could, if we could earmark some for that. And Laura, when you said that it was uh, Buxton and they were very expensive, what are we talking about magnitude wise? Like $60,000. Hey, that's, that's a year. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, and, I, and I had a long conversation with one of their current clients, and it was a woman uh, in economic development in Bangor, Maine. And, you know, her community spent the money because they had an, an empty mall. And, you know, how do you get people in there? Um, you know, we don't have, it's like, who was that gentleman that came from Derby or Chester or something that spoke to us? We don't have large open tracts of land that we would like to convert to tax, you know, taxpayers, uh, you know, commercial uh, a tax base. So we, you know, we have the pockets that we have. You know, there's not a lot of space to develop new. Obviously, think, things can be redone. So that's why it's never, you know, it's never been a mun municipal initiative. But it doesn't mean we can't try to come up with something to give tools to our our brokers. And, and our land landowners, uh, and it, commercial tent landowners. And it might be something where we create the um, desired fields, the information we want, and not make it incredibly complex. So many of these people want to know how many nail salons, how many banks, how many this. Mm -hmm. And if we gather that information, and then we do have access to certain data that we could provide them. So we are working on a spreadsheet right now um, over at Town Hall where we, we are putting all of the businesses in the square footage. Um, we're doing it for a variety of reasons, um, communication being one of them. But so we will be able, because you're right, we do have access to much of that information. We did get a call. I got a call and sent them over to Laura from a gentleman Thank you. who claimed, <laughs> claimed to be wanting to open up a business here. And he wanted to know, he wanted all this profit information that our businesses, I mean, which I thought was just private information. He wanted to know, you know, what the profit margins were here and, and, and how, how much money was spent in different stores and that kind of thing. And I just said that information is no. not, not accessible, nor should it be, in my opinion. Um, I, I guess the other thing that I struggle with, I, I did some research on this and I was looking at, you know, sort of basic um business recruitment strategies and certainly you know you can you can create or craft something that like you said bj sticks to the the, the areas of focus that we want but um they all did come back to data and it said that you know you can you can you can create the most beautiful sales presentation you want but if you don't have real credible data it's really not worth it's the paper that it's written on Agreed. Uh, how, and then the flip side to that was, I, I started also as I was researching this, coming up with a lot of articles that would talk about this and then they would say, but some feel that there's been this war going on between recruiting versus growing what you already have. And they think growing is, is winning. In other words, that if you're gonna put any resources to something like gathering data, you might be better served by just putting those resources toward the businesses that you already have there and making them more successful, which then begets more businesses coming in. Mm -hmm. so there's there's that angle. Jack, what Jack, what are people asking for when you're taking potential commercial, uh, you know, renters out? What are some of the things? What are some of the tools that they're looking for, or information that they're looking for? Well, they really look to us, you know, to give them that information. So, and like you said, there's not a lot of information, you know, out there. Uh, I did check with some, you know, other towns, you know, this past month, and um, there's not, uh, you know, they don't track vacancy rates. That's been a big thing I have asked about. So that was interesting. And then I asked also some large uh, commercial brokers. And one thing about New Canaan is it's, a, it's small. So Greenwich 
there is more information available to commercial brokers there than that's available to us. Such as, oh, like what's that? What such as what type of information? Well, for example, you know, uh, well, we did. I was talking to this broker about vacancy rates, and so, but one place that we can call information from is from LoopNet. You know, that that is the commercial, yeah. you know, listing. So you could. You know, there's information there. Uh, I, I don't know how accurate it is. It doesn't list every building, but you can get an idea of movement of properties, you know, off that site. That was recommended. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I is that a that. subscription service, Jack? I mean, or does like no? You can just you can just or? anybody can go on to it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you can do that. I can go over that with you. But if, if, if when you've been showing people some properties and obviously the mm -hmm. property's got to work for the specific business, but is there anything, is there any one piece of information or, or even a presentation or a package or anything that you don't have that you think could put this over the finish line? Well, so what BJ was saying, I would say, but in just the opposite, I, I would, I would not, we're, we're looking when I deal with people, they're looking for what is not here. You know, they, they, they want to fill that gap of the missing service. Cheese shop, right. Yeah, so it's like the cheese shop, you know, right. it, it's you know, the classic thing. Um, I just did a commercial rental to uh, a type of doctor. And, uh, well, we're moving down the line. It's, you know, we're pretty far. So I won't say it's done. Right. But what, what was the whole point of it was, was that that service is really not offered here. So that attracted them. See, so it's what we're missing is important. Um, and just, you know, from what I just was hearing everyone discuss, the word experiential is really important because I do think retail is moving into that area. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that would be art galleries, that's food, all of that. There's interest that comes in. And when they come in, you know, they want to know about the town. They want to understand how the traffic is developed. And I'm able to talk about that with my experience. And I assume most commercial brokers would be. But that's a big question for them. How does this town work? How, how do you pay these rents with a 20,000 person base? Mm -hmm. And then you have to explain to them. New Canaan draws from everywhere. Right. And, that's, and that's what you... That's important for them to know. I don't know how you would be able to get those figures. Oh, one thing I wanted to say too is one person, one way we got information was from our credit card companies. Yeah, I don't that, know what yes, that's what Buxton. That was the basis of Buxton when we when we talked with them. That's exactly how they got their information, and that was the remember the David Genovese program too presentation. That was yeah. all based on cell phones and credit card information. Yeah. So yeah. Laura, I don't know whether you use that or not, but American Express would send us, you know, a tremendous amount of information about our average sale, where the sale came from. You know, that was a very good source of information. Yes, and, we used uh, to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, so, I just have, uh, sorry, I thought what you were saying, Jack, about people come here for what's missing. What if TDAC did a survey in connection with a New Canaan advertiser asking the residents, what do you feel is missing in town or something like that? that you know, then gets some press in the local paper and then the commercial brokers, we could send that to them, they could see it. It's kind of a way to start to put ideas in some of these people's heads. And then the other thought I had is what if we went out to a company, one idea, American Express is a big one because they do that whole shop local thing. I think it's the day after mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, a Saturday after Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But what Small if business did, Saturday. Yeah. Right. Saturday. So what if you went to them or a commercial broker or a bank about sponsoring a America's Best Downtown series? And it's like Buchanan could be the first one and it becomes an annual thing or something. You know, the whole thing of trying to build back post-COVID. I mean, I keep talking about the silver linings in COVID. And mm -hmm. This is one of them. Like, there's a lot of banks I know who work with a big one that are trying to find these kind of feel-good moments. So that could be something. I mean, there may be somebody in town who's a CEO of one of those banks we could float that with. And it's just like a, a feature mm -hmm. that they use for more kind of their community outreach or something. And, uh, 
And, and you uh, mentioned I, at the start too, Alan, about just the need for more PR. I mean, I know Brock had reached out to me when a while ago and you know, Bankwell moves their whole operation here. And he thought, you know, that's something that's newsworthy, right? They've, they've moved all their employees for their entire company to New Canaan, Connecticut. And that's, that's big news yeah. in the business mm -hmm. world. But by the way, I did love that idea of asking the people of New Canaan what they're missing. That's a great idea. Can't we, I mean, can't we even use uh, high school students to do a, uh, to go out in the sit in the town at, and on the street and ask Man people what the they think they're missing? Yeah. Because when you do things in advertise or you do it by email, you get a very, sometimes a very low return rate. Mm -hmm. so you kind of, you know, interact with people as they're coming into town, at least you can get some information from them. We actually, we actually had some great success recently, and I, I was going to talk about it in a minute, but um, we did send out a parking survey about a month ago to all of the people that had uh, commuter parking permits, and mm -hmm. we wanted to ask them very basic questions like, do you know when you're going back? How many days a week do you think you'll be going yeah. back? And we had a huge response rate in, within 24 hours of sending it out. Mm -hmm. I was shocked, and we got some really, really helpful information from which to then base some decisions going forward. We should try that. This, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, we have so we have such a big database now that uh, the town has put together of email addresses, and um, you know, I think asking the basic question, "What do you leave town to buy?" Yeah. Um, it, you know, that's kind of make our own sort of gap analysis. You know. Uh, and I and think we have what, those questions. I mean, we did that market demand study back in two thousand and ten. And we asked those very questions. And I, you know, look back on it now. One of the things at the time that came out over and over again was we didn't have a high-end ladies' shoe store. And right after that, we got two. Um, the cheese shop that. was the one that kept coming up. And it's nice now that we do have, I mean, Walter Stewart's has got great cheese, but now we have a dedicated cheese shop. So um, there were changes that were made because of that. Kevin, uh, do you think any of the money, the federal money um, that could be coming our way, do you think any of it could be used for uh, revitalization efforts or, or, or having a consultant run like a market demand study for us again or something like that so we can pull some of this data together? We have no plans yet. But is it... Is Dr. Frey it, and the money, we, you know, we expect to get a couple few million dollars. So it's... Uh, yeah. Be happy to entertain ideas. Yeah, business under the category of business development. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'll, what I'll do is pull out the market demand study from 2011 um, and look at it. It was 10 or 11. Um, I'm sure some of it can be recreated on our own that we wouldn't need a consultant for. That was done based on a grant that Steve Kleppen had gotten years ago, I remember. Um, but again, it's just, it's back to the the data. You, you know, we, we can make it look as, as beautiful as it is, but at the end of the day, they really do want the information that we don't have. And, and we're, we keep coming back to it. I guess that's what I keep hearing is that every meeting we come up with the ideas, but we still keep coming back to, but we just don't have the, the, the resources to, to get the data that we need. Um, just trying to see in my notes on doing that. Um, there was also in one of the articles I read, there was, there was talk about, you know, that you customize the data that that as I said, retail chains are pitched by communities every day, but how do you stand out? You provide rele rele relevant analytics that are customized to them. Don't just send the same standard package. Um, so th there's a lot of information on this that I think we can dig deeper into. Um, so maybe that's the next step. And like you said, Alan, I mean, we could just ask some very basic questions and just get the conversation rolling and that may in of itself. Everybody's us giving opinion. their opinion, so. <laughs> <laughs> you have to manage the expectations of what happens once you give your opinion. Yeah, I did get an email from a resident recently who had a suggestion of all these different food restaurant types of places that we should have. Simple. Uh, what's the one that everyone loves? Something greens, simple greens. What is that oh, one? Greens to go. No, not greens yeah. to go, but that's a good one too. Um, I don't know. She sent me a list. And... Okay. All right. Um, so well, maybe Dr. what we'll do, Jack. Dr. Yeah. The, um, let me just throw this out. So. What about the, you know, uh, what about having uh, a round table discussion, maybe with you and Laura, with the commercial brokers and see what they have to say? Well, that's exactly what I was suggesting when we started. I think you weren't on yet. Yeah, it, I wasn't on. It was late. Sure. I'm sorry. As part of that idea of what of us producing something that, that we could arm these uh, brokers with, 
we thought we don't we don't want to assume that we know what they need. We need to sit down with them. That was exactly one of the suggestions we had to sit down okay. with them and say, Sorry. what is it that we could help you with? Mm -hmm. as we said to you, that would, that would help you seal the deal here. And, and also maybe a round table of some of the, the newest merchants that have come in. Mm. And because I do feel that um, the, the people I'm talking to are good business people. They're energetic. They love the town. Yeah. And, and, and you, you really want to grow the, how those people bring other people in. And I think, I think we would have had more of those types of opportunities if COVID hadn't been here. I mean, certainly yeah, the chamber absolutely. always had the new member breakfast, right? Every mm -hmm. year we would have that and we would go around the room and everybody would introduce themselves. And then there were a lot of partnerships yeah. that were, were made from there. But um, so I think this is a great time to do just that. Yeah, because you met those, those two new, new young ladies that are coming in with the salon and they're pretty excited. They're and very they're, excited. And they want to participate. And I do find that in other people that I have uh, met that are newer merchants. Not that the older merchants shouldn't participate, but yep. there's something about those newer merchants that have studied the town, they, they, they see something, they're lifting their businesses. And uh, it's that you know fellow in John Jacob Gallery is really interesting. Yep. And yeah. uh, you know he just may have some in interesting insights. So Laura and I will set up some of these, <clears throat> as you said, Jack, the round tables with the brokers and with some new merchants for starters. We'll start looking at some questions that we could potentially ask. If any of you want to sit in and be part of those round tables, um, send me an email uh, and let me know and I'll put you on the list and then I'll, we'll set up some dates and, and we'll, we'll do it in person. I mean, we can do that now, right? That's the best part. <laughs> well, one of my back burner projects uh, that, what Tucker and I were talking about uh, in February of 2020, we have so many women-owned business in this town. So many. Uh, it is so impressive. And, you know, I think that's a, a really attractive story. And, you know, I don't, I don't know how to get that out there and, you know, do some data collection on it. And um, I don't know. I, I don't know what would be the venue to do that, but it's, it's, it's significant. That would definitely be newsworthy. I remember, Laura, at one point, you and I went through the whole list of stores and it was yep. it was almost, you know, two out of three. Right. Women owned or, uh, you know, a, a husband and wife team owning a business, um, but a lot. Our own BJ flag right here. And Heather <laughs> Satin, just while we're sitting right here. And Alan McGreenow. So. <laughs> um, hey, Tucker, it occurs to me, too, that we, we have to study the ecosystem we're in, too, because, it's not, you know, the, the re region and where people go to get things, it's kind of, you can't just focus on New Canaan, because you got to know that, like this, this Sundance thing that came into Westport, right? And there's things that in, are in other, like, what's that thing up in Cape Cod that, um, if, if we look around for the things that are not here and not within 10 miles, um, you, you might be better focused on, you know, we need this locally and there is no competition right. within 10 miles. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Okay. All right, I'll get back to all of you with some dates. Laura and I will get cranking on that. And we'll, Mathilde, you're listening. We'll get you to help us and we'll get something <laughs> set up and you all can uh, participate. That would be great. Um, moving right along, I just wanted to let you all know to follow up on, um, I'm just going to show you a quick presentation that was part of the Board of Selectmen meeting um, a week ago. Hold on, what happened to it? Uh, where'd we go? Hold on, now you're seeing my... Uh, the Board of Selectmen approved, uh, there were four parking recommendations. Okay, it looks like it's coming up. You see that? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to quickly take you through this, but there were four recommendations. The Board of Selectmen at the time only approved two just because we needed some more information. But just to let you all know, as I say, we sent out the survey um, to all of the uh, commuter, whoops, um, people that had uh, commuter permits, and we got a ton of information. The one that sticks out the most in my mind was 60% of the people that responded said that they would renew their permit and they were planning to go back, but we definitely heard that most people are going back two, maybe three days a week for starters. 
At any rate, uh, at the Board of Silicon meeting this coming Tuesday, they will take up the renewal date, whether they're gonna do it in July or September. Um, we just didn't have enough information um, a couple of weeks ago to make that decision. Um, but we are starting to charge for parking in the Park Street and Playhouse parking lot on Saturdays for some reason. And there, there must be some reason why that happened many, many years ago, but we weren't. We were charging in Morse Court, so we're just trying to be consistent. And this is also, and Laura, you can jump in here because you're actually on the Parking Commission. But this is also um, important because um, we're, remember, we've got all these employees now who have these free permits and we don't want to get them into bad habits on the weekends and not parking in the lots that they're supposed to be and creeping back into the, the town lots. Uh, the other thing is we're going to put commuters, make available to commuters a two-year priority list. In other words, if you decide right now that you're not ready to uh, renew your permit, you can go onto a list for up to two years and you at any given time when you decide you can renew your permit uh, right away. And then of course, the other is the EV charging. Uh, we did have some money allotted, so we are going to add a second um, electric vehicle charging station in uh, Morse Court. There's, there's two spots there right now, but only one charger. So we're gonna add a second charger and also to um, put one uh, on the annex. It says here the Outback, but it's called the annex. So I just wanted you to, um, yeah, this was the survey results that you can see. Um, so 39% plan to use their permits one to three days a week, uh, 27, three to five days. So at any rate, um, let me stop sharing. Um, I just wanted you to be aware of that because, uh, and this sort of goes back to our conversation um, earlier. I was speaking with, I went into the cleaners the other day to drop something off and he told me that he's now got 400 new customers in the last year because he said, I've got all these new families that have found me. And then, you know, one of the nursery schools told me that she's getting, the phone is off the hook for spots for two-year-olds and they just can't come up with enough space. So things are definitely happening. Oh, and the other, which is really important on the parking is we have now finally got the pay by phone. So you, you do have an app on your phone and you can add more time, which is nice. We've heard so many people say when they're visiting downtown that they were two minutes late and they got a ticket. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, so now well, we can this app. Um, that it works there. great. I used it. It works great. Oh, good. Let you know, I was in a shop and I was taking on and let you know right away on your phone that you're, you know, you're running out of time. It's great. wonderful. Good, good. Hey, like Tucker, it. let me mention one other thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, we, last week we, we uh, uh, discovered that the state Department of Transportation was doing a uh, public hearing on, on new schedules for the trains. And um, as a result of that, looking at our branch line in the Canaan, they had recorded us as not being having any substantial change, but we've lost our Ford express trains in the morning and four at night. So this, today we had an interesting conversation with the head of the public transportation bureau in DOT and five uh, other uh, area selectmen and uh, first selectmen and mayors. And um, the DOT is trying to assess, you know, the obviously 30% ridership it's hard to bring back trains. And yet, if we don't have trains that people regard as commuter trains, they're not going to commute. Right. So, and a lot of people are driving to Manhattan, and it's now taking two hours to get back and forth. And uh, so they, they, they are going to increase service by August. Um, but promises of getting back the express trains, not only for the, not only for the branch line, but also for the main line, you know, because the Westport has express trains that, that people rely upon. Um, so the current one hour schedule sort of works, but works poorly for commuting. Mm -hmm. and so we're trying to figure out how to, how to solve this problem. I suggested that they ought to just take the month of September and say, we're gonna give you back your trains and see if people will come back. And then if they don't, we, we gotta figure out what the problem is and how we're gonna encourage people. Because again, if people start working three days a week, ridership is gonna be down. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but on the other hand, we're, we're a commuter town. We, we need commuter trains with express trains to make people want to go to work on, on the train. So hopefully we're going to begin to see people going back to Manhattan, but also by, you know, but it's probably going to be a rough road between now and September and October. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean listen, we always were talking about the train schedule even before COVID, but now we really have to pay attention. Um, many of you were on the last meeting, um, Tiger Man came on and talked to us about the bump outs and that was approved again, just to let you know that was approved by the board of, uh, by the parking commission, police commission. 
Um, so that work will start at some point this summer, which I think will be a great addition to downtown. And I think what will come with that, Dan, is we can really uh, take that as a chance to really clean up and, and you know, really make it look good in some flowers and things. Um, another thing that's happening, again, we've got so many new families here. Um, in the six months or seven months now that I've been in this role, I'm in charge of special events and obviously special oh. events are kind of quiet, but um, hello, whoever's dog is barking. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it is off, I mean, every day now I'm getting five or six um, special event applications. So things are definitely happening and people are out and about and that's that's a good thing. And Laura, what have you got? Sidewalk sale coming up. Yeah, uh, sidewalk sale is going to be the 17th of July. Uh, Friday, They can people can be out on the sidewalk and uh, I'm in the process now. I'm only doing Elm Street. So I'm really very selectively inviting people. So Matilda has been helping me and we are going through and kind of locking down who, who you know, local businesses want to come and then folding in uh, other local entrepreneurs um, and just seeing what the space allows. I'm going to have music this year and a magician, but no face painting, no kitty rides, anything like that. So sort of a hybrid, um, but it'll still have the village fair, uh, the both uh, political parties have uh, bought their booth space. So they'll be out there. It's a good opportunity. Uh, and then- Do I still have to come out with you at five o'clock in the morning? Yes, yes. <laughs> um, and then uh, uh, Matilda and I had our first meeting with our team for kind of the taste of the town, explore New Canaan uh, taste tours. Uh, William Pitt Sotheby's has uh, volunteered to sponsor that. I'm working with Indira Christie on that. We'll get a meeting hopefully next week and talk to her and her office manager. Uh, and then Halloween parade and um, holiday stroll. I mean, I just emailed the, uh, the officer uh, Ferrero who handles all the special scheduling to let him know. So it's exciting to feel that those uh, events are gonna happen. And um, so we're, we're business as usual at, at the chamber, which is great. Um, the date for the sale is when? The date is July? July 17th, Saturday, 17th. July 17th. Thank you. 16th Thank you. Is, is Friday, just New Canaan. Um, the street's not Stores on the sidewalk. Kevin, while well, we've got you quickly here, um, can you give everyone an update? Because this has been asked of me a couple of times too on the natural gas in the downtown, the timing on that and, and the businesses that are going to benefit from that. I know Jack said that this is a prime time to be able to, that's something again, back to the tool belt, right? That we offer natural gas. You want to bring everyone up to speed? Well, Eversource is in every night. Um, currently, they just the uh, finishing up Locust. They they promised to bring gas to that new development at Forty Two Forest, the uh, mixed use townhouses and uh, apartments and retail. And um, and then the the uh, they're completing the East Avenue on Main up to Locust. Um, they're also going to bring gas to the rear of the Elm Street North side of the Elm Street uh, retail stores. Um, and to town hall into the town hall annex. Um, they haven't made much progress on the south side of, of um, Elm Street because, especially at Morse Court, where there's a problem with which, how do you bring gas in um, since both sides are, are, are basically um, street facing, right. street facing stores. Um, although I think that is not so much of a problem. We've talked about Bank America block and uh, and they, you know, bringing it back through that alleyway and stuff. So the gas is there. Every source, in my mind, you know, they spent thirty million dollars bringing in mains, and they've only done several hundred uh, residential houses. We've done all the schools except for West School. We, we're doing the town buildings. We've done some of the town buildings already, but they've done, they they haven't done a great job with downtown and the gas. So, but they're committed to staying here. They're not, you know, they committed to three years. We sort of lost part of last year with COVID, um, but um, so. But we're trying. We, yeah, Tucker, I mean, you're really the point person on this to try to try to help Eversource. They're a horrible because of COVID. Probably they they they, they laid off their sales force and they're they're kind of a bad marketing organization. Um, um, but anyway, the, we, we want to get as much expansion and hookups as we can while they're while we have their attention. All right. So as I mentioned earlier, we're putting together this sort of massive spreadsheet, if you will, that we're going to share with them so that we can get them front and center of anybody who might potentially be hooking up. Jack? 
Yeah, so, so if a building owner wants to get gas, the point we have them call you, Tucker? That would be, that's yes, because I have a form that Eversource has shared with me that I would sh okay. then send back to them that they would fill out and then I would get it to them and then I would have them on my hot mm -hmm. sheet so that I could follow up with them and make mm -hmm. sure. I've done that already for a number of businesses and I, I have to really stay on top of Eversource to make sure that, um, that they're doing what they need to do to get it up and running. Part of the problem, yeah. Jack, is that you know businesses often have tri triple net leases, so the landlord doesn't really care about the energy bill that the right. the tenant has because they're paying it. So um, we, you really have to work with the tenants as well as the landlord. Yeah, but it does make the building more valuable if it sure. if they do have gas. Correct. So Correct. I have landlords that are interested in hooking up, and that's another that's a really good selling point for a lot of these buildings that they have gas because the energy bill is so much less that it would attract business to town. Right. It's a great thing, Kevin, right. you brought gas in. And it's it so much safer get... when it comes to the restaurants, you know, all those propane tanks yeah. behind all these restaurants is really a safety hazard. It will drop their operating costs. So we just have to get them Ooh, hooked man. up. Yeah. Um, Laura and BJ, you want to tell us where we are on the on the wallpaper? We're almost we're almost ready to go. We had a little bit of a roadblock, but we're getting there. And Jack's been helping with this too. Yeah, so we had a landlord uh, who has a lot of empty space uh, promise us a thousand dollar grant, and he reneged um, for what you know. Who knows? Uh, he he you know when we explained to him and Tucker sent him the 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 artwork that we have in place ready to go that BJ's team has done, um, and he said, "Well, just go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get some paper." <laughs> Even though he saw all these beautiful draw, you know, pen and ink drawings and uh, mm -hmm. BJ worked with Amanda and now each building has its own little paragraph about what it's about. And, um, and Dan, so, Don, Dan Mulhern um, worked tirelessly to get all the different artwork that we needed for each of the things. There's 11 pictures and um, which is great, you know, so, you know, Moving along, Jack, you you felt that you could get a fantastic print deal, so you're going to pursue that. I'm going to, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I did have someone say that uh, an architect say he may help us with printing. I have, I'm working on that. Oh, that's awesome. I think the two things that I know Amanda was working on was the quality of the paper, and mm. that they have to be installed. They tend to weigh a lot like it's a gigantic piece of paper. So it's not a um, simple install that a, one person could do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you do need to, to make sure that you've taken care of install. Yeah. And yeah, each one is customized. Yeah, yeah each, each one is will customized. be customized. By the so width. BJ's, BJ's team has got the, the kind of foundations ready to go. Um, and then, you know, once we know, you know, we'll customize it with the broker number and if they have a QR code, um, and, you know, we were, depending on the size, they were, you know, between 300 and $500 each installed. Um, and cause the paper quality was, was pretty high. So, um, you know, we're, you know, yeah. open to any suggestions, but the installation was definitely a part of it, you know, cause you can't just go in there with some packing tape and tape them up um, in order for them to stay and be positioned so light still comes in, um, that they're installed at the right height and all that sort of stuff, so. So do you have other owners that are anxious to get them in? I know you're you know working the, with them. Yeah, uh, I know the guys who have the New Balance space that just went empty May 1st on Main Street would definitely be interested. Um, so I'm going to put a call into them and see if they, you know, wanted to, um, you know, uh, get, get involved. Um, you know, Jack, what do you think? Would Terry want to put stuff up at, on the garlic space, garlic and herb space? Cause I that's a very her. visible spot. I could ask her, but yeah. I just think it's important. Like if new balance would do it to get somebody one up, know. so then they'll see it. I did actually call when I heard the story about the person pulling out i did call another town and they do do this and they they have you know it's 100 percent compliance it looks great and um and it is done by ordinance you have 30 mm -hmm. days to 
you know, uh, participate in the community and, you know, do something with your window so they're not an eyesore. Mm -hmm. So that is something another town did and it, it is 100% compliant. Yeah. Same type of thing, same type of decorative architect architectural uh, mm -hmm. All right, well, if, if we Looks can good. count on you three to sort of wrap this up, find us, um, find us a, a store to launch the first one and then figuring out how we can do this in an affordable way. Uh, I'd like yeah, because the on. BJ's team has done the design work, so yeah. it, they really are ready to go. Um, yeah. But can we encourage maybe just to get somebody to do it, to give them a break on that price to be if they're the first ones in? Is that something we can do, or is that um, something, not a way we an, can spend money? Yeah, the price the price is um, an exterior price. It's not you know we are a print source company, so because of the specialty paper and because it's so large, it's done on a certain type of printer. So um, like an architect's office wouldn't have the size you need, it's actually larger. Okay. So, um, the, you, so we're, our hands are tied a little with the, the pricing and then they do need to be installed. So, so those are just two things and I'm sure you'll be able to find, you know, a person who could do that well, but but bj i'm just saying we have a budget i'm not sure any of that budget could be used to get a few of them in and then mm -hmm. if we don't have an ordinance we have to kind of like mm -hmm. convince other people to do it you know so we've got to get a couple in hopefully they'll look great and then others will follow can yeah. we give them any break uh, that's what i'm just trying to with that money that we've allocated okay. is that what is the exact cost to do one store? Installation and the printing, BJ. <clears throat> so it, yeah, so it depends on the size of the window. So yeah. we were getting quotes um, that could range from like 300 to 500, depending on that width of the window. Okay. So um, we were really looking, um, we had kind of um, organized it so you could see all the windows and there were a, quite a few different sizes. And uh, so that like, if you were, if you, if you had somebody who was gonna do five windows, well, then we have one installation fee, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think that the, I love Jack's idea of, you know, get one window up yep. so yeah. that somebody could see, oh, that's great. Now that's not going to make us have an ordinance, if you know what I mean. Right. Well, that that's comes that's from tough. The that's hard. <laughs> no, I know that. Yeah, I but it does that. it does get the you know. All right. The, so we're, the we're just gonna up. let's commit to getting this done, getting one up, getting whatever, however we have to. Uh, the good the do. good news is since we've started this discussion, a couple <laughs> of spaces have filled up. So that's I know it's that's good, good news. Yeah. The unfortunate thing is the one store that we were really basing this whole project from is the one who the one, needs it the most. He needs it the most. And he was the one who was, was, was really all in. I mean, when I yeah. talked to him in December, I mean, and I was, don't, yeah. And I don't want you to think it was like, um, Oh, I don't want to spend 5,000. He didn't want to spend $50. Mm -hmm. So the, the, it's too wide of a difference, Jack, to give him a deal. Mm -hmm. well, well, I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about yeah. the, the next one we think of, you know, just to right. get them to do it. But at the last meeting, we, uh, I made a proposal that TODAC, uh, TDAC recommend funding up to 2,500 total for the, for the program. Exactly. The TDAC team uh, approved unanimously. And certainly that's in the minutes, which if I'm a landlord and I'm reading, I'm aware of that. And the, the whole idea is to remove the disincentive so we can get it going. Right. Right. So there's got to be some, some of that funding can, can help subsidize this. Yeah, because okay, some good. of it's got to go to the, the design work that's already been done. So, and then there, there'll be some left over for printing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. so let's, let's put real numbers down on paper. Let's see what, what, what we need. We're, if we're short, what we need, what we can use from that 2,500. And just get one ordered and get it up and then the others will follow then we have some example to go around and show them great right okay um 
we sort of skipped around. I had PR here. And again, Alan, I just, you know, any opportunities we have to get any PR, I, that's an area that even back to my chamber days was always just something that um, I always wanted to do more of and just could never quite crack that, crack the code on that sure. rather than have it be uh, negative stories, you know, Jennifer do those kinds of stories, but we want some positive stories. Right. No, I think there's an opportunity, you know, back again for, you know, people wanting to help revitalize towns and everything post COVID. I, I think there is. So I'll give some thought and put some feelers out. Okay. All right. Um, anybody want to just go around the room? Greg, you got stuff going on, Glass House? Uh, this Friday, we open the uh, online auction. We're not doing an in-person uh, event at the property this year. Uh, it would have required commitments be made long before we knew that we would be able to garner any attendance. Uh, so we've got the online auction. Uh, bidding starts May 28th, and it expires uh, June 12th. And uh, we're, you know, evaluating how to operate going forward. We had sold tickets through June 30th uh, under the model we have now, which is um, uh, grounds passes and people driving direct to the site. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, we, we're subject to the state rules, but we're also subject to the rules of the company that owns the, uh, the glass house site, the National Trust for Historic Preservation. So I'm working with them to evaluate how we can operate past July 1 given the removal of restrictions, but at the same time, concern for the health of the employees as well as the uh, visitors that come to the site. Right, okay, good. Karen, you had a big program today. We did, it was really, it was wonderful. We had um, a program called Hope Over Hate, um, looking at a lot of the discrimination against the Asian American community, um, sort of both over the last year and a half, and then, um, you know, sort of the, the Atlanta shooting catalyzing even more violence. So Michael Chen, who all of you know, um, who's on the board at Grace Farms, did a really remarkable job moderating today um, with Congressman Jim Himes and Connecticut attorney uh, William Tong and uh, the CEO of Hartford Healthcare. We were gonna have a professor who looks at sort of policy around discrimination from Quinnipiac and her mother fell ill, so she couldn't join us. But Michael really did an outstanding job and. We had 200 people who joined us today, really engaged. Um, so it felt it felt really good to have, um, oh, and I'm sorry, I missed Pauline Brody, a New Kin resident who is the vice president of an organization called OCA Fairfield County, which stands for the Organization of Chinese Americans. Um, and she was she did a great job too. So um, that was a virtual program. We're, we're so looking forward to be able to be with people again. Um, you know when you're opening, when the campus is open? The exact date is not known, but we're saying late summer. Um, and I know, you know, we're in the throes of even thinking through community dinner and welcoming back our local community in September and October and doing planning for that and looking at how really, you know, the, the sand continues to shift, but how do we welcome back our nonprofit partners with space grants launching back in September? How do we welcome people back to the court? Um, so really making sure that it's all in, in compliance with, with a lens towards safety, but also with a lens towards really wanting to embrace our community again. Um, so lots, lots, of, lots that's being discussed and really wanting to reopen with a lot of intention. So a few more virtual programs. Um, Matthew, who runs our faith initiative, is doing a few more um, of these book discussions. Um, Mark Fowler is doing this awesome program called... Um, it's um, road trip in your backyard and he's going with channel 12 all of these really fabulous places that are close to all of us um so that's going well and we're looking at um bringing on um you know some new arts um related programming around the topic of time which they chose pre-covid so it's um, wow. <laughs> more relevant than ever so um th that's where we are and of course working with nancy geary and laura pla and amanda on um, october for design and how we can be integrated into that. Yeah, and Nancy's not on here, but I can tell you, I, I had a long conversation with her yesterday. That is going gangbusters. I mean, she is definitely going to be sold out. Uh, she's already uh, had 20 rooms reserved um, at, a local, at one of the local hotels for the group that's all coming from Palm Springs. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be really big. So as much as we're sorry that we missed 2020 and launching that, I think it gave them more planning time and this year it'll be even better. Um, one of the things that I forgot to mention, just fun little factoid, but, um, and maybe you've read about it in the paper, but 
we are going to have a movie filmed here. Um, it's called The Noel Diary, and it's going to be in front of Town Hall on June 27th, and it's going to look like snow, a snowy Chris holiday stroll, Dan, actually, is what the whole movie is based on a little boy who's separated from his father when he's like eight years old, for whatever reason, I'm not sure, and he reconnects with them um, during a holiday stroll kind of event, and so it's going to be a nice story. I met with a whole other crew from the Discovery Channel today who's doing a, uh, a movie on sort of the evolution of the, um, the JP Morgans, the Rockefellers, and they're, they, they're just going crazy over Waveney House to have, you know, a, a, someone having breakfast with a cigar and paper and you know, all the servants around them. So um, that's the other kind of thing that's happening too, is the film permits are, are coming fast and furious as well. Tucker, do we have a list of all the movies that have been filmed here? Do you know? Um, I could look back. I mean, I, I know for 12 years because Tom kept all the film permits, so I could definitely look back. I mean, the most notables are certainly The Ice Storm, Stepford Wives. Um, and that's then, sometimes, that's a good story angle, too. We get that a lot with our hotel clients who do roundups of what is filmed here, and, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll pull that list up. Okay, thanks. So as far as follow-ups, rather than get us off track, um, on my list is that we are going to host, uh, Laura and I are going to work, and anybody else who wants to be part of that, email me on setting up some roundtable discussions uh, with or interviews with brokers and also with some of our newer merchants and, and, and veteran merchants as well, just literally a roundtable in terms of what we can do to help them. Um, we're going to talk about possibly surveying our residents, you know, what, what are they missing here? Um, Laura, BJ, Jack are going to follow up on, and Amanda, of course, is part of that, um, the storefront art. Dan, if you can help just getting that finalized and, and getting one up so that we have an example to show around. Alan, you're going to look for any PR opportunities for us. And then I think if we all start really paying attention to that CT visit um, program, that marketing campaign, I think that will help us all. And, and as I say, it's free. Our tax dollars are already covering that nut. So we should take advantage of it. Um, did I miss anything in terms of follow-up? Tucker, you, you, I'm not sure who's going to follow up about the federal funds and if we can. Yes, I'll do that. I, I, I will, I'll check and see what the process would be for that. Um, and how we can, how we can, um, leverage some of that. That's on my list. Perfect. Our next meeting is June 24th, but we'll have a lot of um, interaction in between them um, just by email on these different working committees. So, um, Tucker, are you imagining that that June meeting would be in person or are we still sort of evaluating that? I think most are going back to being in person. Mm -hmm. I mean, certainly I think hybrid is going to be a thing that we're all going to be going with going forward. I know it's much easier for people if you're traveling or if, certainly it's helpful for some of the town hall staff for late, at, late night meetings when mm. people like Tiger Man can be at home and not have to drive home at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. So um, I'm envisioning it that we would be in person, but anybody that wanted to join via Zoom could. The Board of Selectmen has, has had two hybrid meetings already and they've gone well. The quality is not great. Channel 79 has put in and, it, and has been approved uh, for some new equipment including some cameras. So um, that should help with some of the camera quality. The audio is what's um, lacking right now in my mind. So in my opinion, so I'm meeting with IT tomorrow to work on that. Um, but, you know, unless, unless this group 100% feels that we should just continue with Zoom, um, we can do that too. So it's, it's just, and maybe uh, Kevin and I were talking about today and he said, I don't know, maybe there'll be some some meetings that would be all Zoom and then the next month you're hybrid or however you want to work it. So it just depends on the needs of the committee. Oh, and here comes the rain. Yep. I hear it. <laughs> uh, anybody else got anything they want to share with the team? No, it sounds like we've got some work to do, but we're focused on what it is that we're, we should be working on. And uh, I think it'll, it'll provide us with some information and, uh, path forward on some of these projects. Great. Motion to adjourn. I see BJ and I second Dan. Thank you all. Have a great Memorial Day weekend. We are having a parade on Monday. Um, 
St. Mark's down in front of Town Hall, taking a right on Elm and then a left on South Avenue to Harrison, where anybody who's going to the cemetery can go down Harrison. Anybody who needs to peel off at that point can peel off. It's going to be fun. All right. Thanks, all. Thank Bye you. Bye, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Bye now.